Hi, hello, welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. Delighted that you are stopping by. So we are looking here at Series 3 of South Africa, the key grape variety of Pinotage. And this uh, series is actually split into four parts. So we'll look at everything to do with the history and the characteristics of Pinotage in this part one. Part two is talking about uh, the characteristics behind viticulture and vinification for volume inexpensive pinotage. Part three will be about a uh, small batch artisanal and boutique style pinotage and what goes into making that. And then any other great varieties that have not been covered by Chenin Blanc and pinotage. All the other ones will be talked about in part four. Part two through to four will only be available on my e-learning portal. You'll see that at the bottom of the slide. That's winewithjimmy.com. Okay, let's talk about the history of Pinotage. So it begins in 1925. And that's with the creator of Pinotage, a gentleman called Professor Abraham Isaac Perold, who you'll see up here on your slide. So in 1925, he successfully crossed Pinot Noir and Sanso. Sanso was known then in the Western Cape as Hermitage. So that's where the Arge bit comes from. And of course, the Pinot bit comes from Pinot Noir. Now, this background that he had in studying uh, in terms of um, being an alchemist, he it really equipped him with the unique skills and uh, unique skill set to uh, actually offer a lot to the Western Cape uh, viticultural scene. He worked in the Cape government and he decided to extend the range of grapes planted in the region. Uh, to this day, the 177 varietals still form a part of the collection at the Velgevelen Experimental Farm of the University of Stellenbosch. Uh, so that's quite crazy. Very much a pioneering gentleman in terms of bringing um, varieties into the Cape Colony, the Western Cape, but also producing new varieties such as Pinotage. But Pinotage was almost lost to his ambition. And when he passed away, really, Pinotage was really not um, on the front of his agenda. Uh, and he didn't really have many notes pertaining to the variety. So it was almost lost Pinotage. Uh, because of all the other work he was doing until we have the seedlings being rescued by Charlie Niehaus who transported them to Perold's successor who is in this picture and that is Professor C.J. Torondeval and that's at his nursery at Elsenberg Agricultural College. Um, they were simply labelled as Perold's Hermitage crossed with Pinot. So Hermitage crossed Pinot. In 1935, Terron grafted them onto newly established Richter 99 and Richter 57 rootstock at Welgevelen. And in 1941, he then produced the first barrel of Pinotage wine in Stellenbosch. But this is the first barrel, not bottle. The name appeared on a wine label for the first time in 1961. And let's have a look at that just on the next slide. Here you are. So in 1961, a wine was released by the Stellenbosch Farmers Winery, the SFW, uh, which was the 1959 Lanzarac Pinotage. And this is part of the label you can see here. So this was the first bottling of the Pinotage wine. Further history. So also in 1941, Pinotage vines were planted at the Cannoncop estate by Paul Sauer and also Danny Rossov. And the wines which have later risen to great fame can mature up to something like 25 years. So this estate, Cannoncop, has been uh, called the formidable leader of Cape Pinotage, being one of the custodians of Pinotage. Here are the vineyard estates of Canacop, and you'll see that the kind of reddish area equates to about half of their vineyard land being Pinotage. So really 
their flagship varietal, very important to Canacop. Further history uh, and linked to Canacop as well, the winemaker in the 80s going into the 90s was a gentleman on the left-hand side called Bayer's Truter. And in 1991, he was named International Winemaker of the Year thanks to his Canon Cop Pinotage 1989 in this bottle. Highest scoring wine at the 1991 IWSC in London. So really, this is at the crux of end of apartheid, the end of KWV's uh, monopoly and quota system, and the start of something new. So Pinotage is right in that early stage of the emergence of the modern South African wine industry. And to back that up, in the 1990s, the Pinotage Association was developed, and that is responsible for developing the quality of Pinotage wines. Uh, this is done by continuously educating members on the viticulture and vinification of Pinotage grapes, and by exchanging ideas on the production and marketing of Pinotage. The association also works to identify problem areas around the grape growing and production of Pinotage, of which we do understand there are some. And I'm going to go through that very, very shortly. There's always a, a distinct impetus on research and development with the Pinotage Association. So what about key characteristics of the grape of Pinotage? Well, it certainly has taken on board one of its parents in terms of its budding. It's similar to Pinot Noir in terms of its early budding date. Uh, but remember that spring frost tends to be very minimal problem across most of the Western Cape. It's only moderately susceptible to fungal diseases, so it makes it quite a vineyard hardy vine. And it is, as a vine, quite hardy, quite vigorous and quite productive. So there are some good yields possible from it. And of course, we will be talking about uh, in uh, video two about the production of inexpensive mass produced Pinotage. Uh, so there, of course, is a possibility, uh, maybe more like Sanso, the other parent, the reasoning behind it's able to yield so much. Um, it reaches quite high sugar levels in rather small berries, resulting in potentially high alcohol wine with deep colour that require only short times macerating on the skins uh, after the end of fermentation to produce that deep colour. So typically only something like three days for a lighter style and maybe only five days to seven days for a fuller style. So rather quite short in terms of its macerations. Now, we mentioned uh, that the Pinotage Association was uh, helping grape growers and winemakers market or produce their wines really in a more positive way, but market at them as well uh, due to the certain issues surrounding grape growing and winemaking, uh, where certain members of the world's wine drinking elite and press and critique has come in to actually slander Pinotage because of certain characteristics that one can find on it. So let's discuss those. So in the past, it has had a reputation for poor quality. Its reputation has not been helped by the effects of virus diseases in the vineyards and possibly fermentations, which were sometimes heavy handed or too hot. So that is according to the Pinotage Association. They say that these unpleasant sort of spray paint aromas due to the isomal acetate may develop if the vines are subject to things like water stress in the vineyard or high temperatures at harvest time where the fruit really comes in very, very hot. Uh, but also increased fermentation temperatures, higher fermentation temperatures. So those three areas. So let's just recap those. Water stress through its ripening phase, high temperatures at harvest and high temperatures at winemaking. Um, other people have said they can find things like burnt rubber notes to it in many kind of cheaper, more inexpensive Pinotage wines. 
uh, and that may be linked to those viral diseases. But the causes are not completely clear. So research is continuing at the University of Stellenbosch to identify the compounds that are responsible for these conditions. I'll talk a bit more about this as we go through the next video as well. OK, so that brings me to a conclusion of Pinotage. So please do join me for part two, talking about high volume, inexpensive Pinotage, where we will discuss really the grape growing and winemaking parameters that make these more affordable high volume expressions. But part two and three and four will only be available to those of you who subscribe to my e-learning portal over at winewithjimmy.com. Any questions, any concerns, any comments, please do get in touch in comments below this video. Let me know about your favorite pinotage. Maybe you've been lucky enough to try one of the very old Canon Cops coming from 89 or 1991. Maybe you just don't like Pinotage and it's not been a friend of yours for many years. Please do let us know. Uh, OK, that's me signing out. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And if you do find yourself in the United Kingdom, please do come and say hi at one of my establishments for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.